Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here, and we've got ourselves another What I Fix daily. Now, this is the USB controller bridge card from the hard drive that I did uh, yesterday, the one, the 1.5 terabyte. Yes, I actually said it properly this time. I know in the video I said 1.5 gigabyte like a moron, but yeah, that's what happens when your brain goes funny. So, this is more of just a interest video. Uh, let me just change the light around a little bit. That's that's a bit better. Uh, just to find out what actually happened to this board, uh, why did it die, and fortunately, at least we know it didn't kill the hard drive. But uh, under normal circumstances, I definitely wouldn't bother fixing these boards because you can just go out and get a new enclosure for twenty nine dollars or less and be on your way again. But, as I mentioned in the previous video, it was probably a good thing to replace that hard drive anyway, given that it is an unusual mechanical setup with the many platters, and it's just really a matter of time before that thing drops dead. Alrighty, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> a bit frog in the throat. Uh, hopefully the ants won't be around here too much today, I can see a couple of them running around. Uh, they definitely have picked up in their infestation since I had a couple of uh, laptops with food and drinks spilled in them. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do to get rid of them, but they are annoying and I'm worried they're going to set up a nest somewhere and perhaps something valuable to me. So, as I was saying, the uh, board gave us no power whatsoever that we could see, which was a good thing. Uh, and hopefully this is just a simple power situation there's nothing much to these boards we've got our controller chip um, let's see i'm not sure if that's a buck or a boost i'd say it's a probably a buck uh, 25 megahertz crystal will be for the usb discussions and on the other side yeah, we've got this fella here which i'm not sure probably a mosfet perhaps and and we've got a little LED here, that could be useful, see what's going on there. Okay, well, I suppose the first thing is, we'll just plug it in and see what we can find with the multimeter. Unfortunately, because I'm zoomed in like this, I am not going to be able to um, you know, show you the meter too easily. I do have, I'm just powering this off a uh, USB power pack. There's no point in me plugging it into the computer or drive yet. I do have my current meter. Can I actually fit that? Maybe if I zoom out a little bit we can have a look. How's that? Alright, you watch it's not going to stick and I've got my fingerprint there. Hopefully no one will copy that and try to open up fingerprint locks that I don't have. So, this has got power to it. It's around 4.9 volts. And we'll flip that cable over and see what happens. Oh, absolutely nothing. Okay, all right, so we've got no power current being drawn there. So let's have a look around on the board and see if we can spot anything. Now, this is going to be a bit of a pain. The only trouble with doing very lightweight boards is uh, they kind of move a lot when you... Let's see, hopefully that's not out of focus, or so I'll be really ticked off. Let's see if I can find something to pin that down. So the first thing I'll probably to do is check see if we're even getting any voltage on this connector. Who knows, maybe the connector itself is actually blown. For all we know it might be. And I would say it wouldn't be entirely unusual. Uh, these machines, these connectors do take a fair bit of a beating. And that's my multimeter telling me it's on. Seems to curse at me and sort of go, I don't want to be on. No, well, such is life. Using my ultra fine probes. Let's see what we got. That should be ground. And we have ground. No voltage. No voltage. What? We're getting absolutely nothing there. What about over here? 
Now, we actually, we won't get anything on this side because this is the USB 3 section and the uh, current meter I've got there is actually USB 2 only, so all these lines are not connected. Okay, so we're not showing any voltage there, we're not showing any current going through, so it would be very unlikely that it's a uh, short to ground, but I will check it anyway. Switching over to diode mode. There we go. Okay, that gives us obviously short to ground. That gives us 24. That can't be right. 24 volts, which means okay, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.6. That's probably the signaling line. 24. Well, there's absolutely nothing in terms of resistance on that side. Uh, so it's not sure, it's not that. And I've had a look inside the connector, there's definitely not faulty there. Uh, let me just have a look here. Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Dave James, didn't mean to steal your uh, style of voice there. Uh, hopefully you won't come after me. I have to change that. I have to look at something else to do. Anyway, let's see if we can get some good light on this. I'll take this away so it doesn't affect the thing. What we've got is... There's a bit of a... Hey, look at that. Yeah, it's coming away. So what we've got here is a basically a mechanical solder joint failure right in on the... Um, <clears throat> really not having trouble speaking again today. Get this light in the right place. Uh, the mechanical holder. Oh, it's probably oh no, it's not connected. So that's broken through. Here, even though it's intact there, it isn't there, which has subsequently resulted in these pads here lifting. So. In theory, what we need to do is just pat that back down, solder it. Uh, probably the easiest thing to do. How close can I get to this? I'm not sure. It's yeah, that's a that's a really good. Oops, that's a really good value there. Yes, yeah, so I have to see if I can reflow in there. So we'll give it a shot. See if it works. I could try to use the soldering iron, but uh, yeah, that's a pain in the posterior trying to get my two millimeter tip in that tiny little hole, uh, that tiny little gap rather. Uh, come on. Now this being the case, that it's a what well, probably is mechanical failure. Uh, it could be caused by a couple of things. It may have been dropped once and hit the cable itself. Ah, uh, gee. I really hope this doesn't uh, go out of uh, focus or blurs because of the hot air. I'm just going to see if I can decouple. Yeah. I'm going to try and decouple this tripod. Get any closer? No, I think I'll push that too far there. Go try that. Now this is going to have to be um, leaded solder level. Oh, what am I talking? About? I always seem to say leaded when I mean unleaded, and vice versa. Okay, hot air on. Here comes the flickering. We're going to go for 460. 
and 75% air is bound to be plenty. So what I might try to do, just to help this all along, is I'm going to put leaded solder, and I mean leaded, into that point there. I also need to turn on the beloved uh, fume extractor, so I'm sorry, the audio is going to be complete crap while I do this, that's the way it goes because I don't really feel like suffering lung diseases slightly later on. And my leaded solder had started to melt. Just pushing down on the connector. Okay, Let's see how that goes. Nice to see the fume extractor doing its job. I just saw the solder switch over from being molten. Okay, time to check the current draw. Now you see with these things, even if they're not plugged into a hard drive or anything else, there should still be a degree of current draw. Uh, it's quiescent current draw. And we should be able to pick that up. Oops. Oh, I swear I saw... What's going on there? Did I just kill it? I think we've still got a break there. But, um, damn it. Yeah, it's sensitive still, so obviously I haven't completely fixed that. Yeah, there you go. It's, um, showing 37 milliamp, 36. So it's not properly soldered yet. What I might have to do is put a tiny bit of uh, solder paste there. I'm just going to apply a little of this solder paste into that connector area. We don't want a lot, because believe me, this is a tiny 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 area okay it's not that tiny all right let's give this a whirl that's probably that's way too much already all right i'll get rid of half of that This will be interesting. Okay, we have the hot air again, which is still running. It's just quiet compared to the fume extractor. And yes, we've got to do the fume extractor again.
So scrub this down. The reason why I refluxed it after the first reflow and then reflowed it again is because due to my sort of rather careless placement and unpredictable, I can't quite see well enough on this at the moment, I decided to give it a second reflow, give it a chance with the better flux to spread out to where it was meant to be to make sure I've got no shorts. And then I checked it under the inspection lamp and it seems okay. Alright, once more, let's plug this in, alright, we've got our 36, which is our quiescent, and as you can see even with this wiggling it around, it's fine. So at this point now, what I'll do is I'll actually plug this into a computer and a hard drive and see how we go. I'm going to zoom out a bit for that. I've got a just a crappy hard drive. I actually know this one is faulty but it's faulty in a way that I can uh, still test. Now, ideally if all goes well this should um, bring up the light and stay on. So I'm plugging that in. It's okay there. I'm finding myself a USB port on my laptop. There we go. We've got a green light and it's flickering which means that the system is trying to access it and I can see it's a proper sort of flickering. I'm just going to bring up the console. Unfortunately, like I said, you can't see this. And I can see that it has, yep, it's accepted it. And the fault that I was expecting has come up, namely that it can't get the proper information off this drive because this drive is cactus. All right, so there you have it. It ended up just being a connector fault. Now, agreeably, you know, you sort of think, well, you know, what was the point of doing all the data recovery? Uh, it came down to an experience thing, or just, I should rather, experience but yeah I guess it is. Uh, those drives with the extra platters on them, the extra high, they are so notorious for failing prematurely that it was a good opportunity now to move everything off that drive onto a newer single platter uh, one terabyte drive. So that's the mystery solved. I probably could have found that if I was really looking for it yesterday in about the same time. But again, like I said, what was the point? All I was mostly concerned about was, did the hard drive still work? If so, get the data off from the recovery machine. No one cares about that, just discard it. Um, also, the other thing I forgot to think about and mention then was, if that's been knocked off like that, it could have been because of the drive being dropped or some other mechanical impact, in which case the drive itself was at risk of prematurely failing, even more so than the design itself tends to cause. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.